We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Jump onto the chart. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show now today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the The government. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about why Bitcoin is likely to rally back to all-time high within just the next couple of months. In fact, it may even happen sooner than that. Over the course of this weekend, we have seen a major rally on Bitcoin moving up to this Monday, April the 8th. Quite a lot is going to happen today from an eclipse to a retest of the all-time high, or at least close to it. That's already happened. Today, we're going to be talking about how best to act in this market that we may be able to succeed in it. If you guys don't know, this is your one-stop shop for learning how to make money and build wealth, get out of debt, gain control over your finances, and live a prosperous life all revolving around the cryptocurrency space. My name is Jeb McAfee. I've been working in the cryptocurrency space for almost seven years now. Been doing this since I was a sophomore. No, I'm sorry, a uh, a junior in high school. So I love what I do. I love helping you guys to succeed in crypto, and I'm very much looking forward to teaching you guys the ways of financial sovereignty, which is none other than the art and the science of of gaining control of your finances, lest they control you, that you are able to grow them, invest them, be generous with them, which is where true fulfillment and joy comes from, and of course, enjoy them, which is a great thing to do as well. Let's read some chat, and then we're going to dive right on into it. Thank you, everyone who has tuned in today. Very excited to be here. We've already got over 150 people in chat. If you have not already, let's go ahead and smash that like button. IA283 is in chat, said Woot. Abraham Lee is in chat, said Hey, Jeb. Hi there, Abraham. Joe Bollier's in chat. Steven is in chat. Sweet Ben Bear 12 said, Grand Monday, Jeb. Hey, y'all. Micah Hall is in chat. And Greg, and it's 420 Wood. XRP Ally, Mr. Check 1984. Raul de Jesus Cruz is in chat. Ernesto Flores is in chat. Bitcoin to all time high, the day of the eclipse. Very well may happen. Let's see. Swole Bros is in chat. Uh, Philly Skills 1428. Let's see. There's no. We have any lag? No, I think we're good. Patience is a virtue. Drian's in chat. One House Production said, best day ever, every day. Love it. Joey Van Englenberg is in chat. Lion Daddy Ernesto Ahumada is in chat. The King Taco. Take Taco, I'm sorry. Taco, I believe it is, is in chat. And Cosmin B and everybody else. Andrew Johnson. Burke. Gundogan. Gundogan. Good morning, everybody. Let's get started. We got a lot to cover. Right now, Bitcoin is trading at $71,926. And leave your questions and comments and things in chat. We're going to be doing a lot of chat interaction. Bitcoin is trading just below two, uh, sorry, $72,000. It is up 3.76% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum is up 6.67% in the last 24 hours, rallying back up to $3,600. I gave you guys a lot of buying signals when Ethereum dropped down there to around $3,200. I hope you took those. We got some pretty great entries down around 32 and 31 and 33 mainly around 33. Um, pretty excited about that drop that we just saw. We're coming out of it now. Uh, the drop is not confirmed to be over, of course. Never is. There's always risk in investing. Please be aware of that. But for now, it looks like it may be coming to its conclusion as we lead on into the halving here. XRP up 2%. Dogecoin up 2%. Um, Cardano up 2%. Toncoin jumping into the top 10, surpassing Avalanche over the weekend, up 8.6% in the last day, up to $20 billion in market capitalization. We've got a lot of other coins that are up between 2 and 5%. Doge, uh, Dog, with ha Dog with Hat is up 15%. Mutable X up 5%. So a lot of cryptocurrencies doing very, very, very well over the last 24 hours. Looks that we may be having a slight recovery. All right. Now, before we get any farther, I do want to let you guys know that if you're building wealth in the cryptocurrency space, it is very important that you protect that wealth. Because if you built a lot of wealth and you just lost it to a hacker, then what was the point of building it anyway? One of the most important 
things that you can do in invest in investment is ensure that you are protecting your wealth. That is so very important because if you don't protect your wealth and you lose it, there was no point. And that is why we partnered with NordVPN and brought them on as an official sponsor. We're one of the only channels in the entire cryptocurrency space with NordVPN as an official sponsor. It's not just an affiliate link. We are under contract with them. And the reason we brought them on as a sponsor and a backer of this show is because I firmly believe that by investing in security, you will help yourself to build wealth in the cryptocurrency space. So make sure to check out NordVPN with the link in the description box down below and sign up for a two-year plan and protect yourself for the duration of the bull market. Or you can go to nordvpn.com forward slash jab. Let's go ahead and read a little bit of chat and then we're going to jump straight on over to the chart. Like I said, guys, we've got a lot to cover today. Uh, Lion in my pocket said, bears, don't forget to look directly into the solar eclipse so you don't have to see your shorts get wrecked. Ouch. Yeah, please don't actually look directly into the solar eclipse, guys. Uh, you can fr you can very much mess up your eyes. Um, but unless, the, unless it's the total solar eclipse and you're right below it, but even then you still have to be careful. But yeah, please don't do that. But Still funny joke. All right. Michael's in chat. His boy Elroy's in chat. Miguel is in chat. Really excited to see all of you guys here. All right. Let's get started. Bitcoin right now, again, trading at $71,800. It is up over the last week in change. Uh, we dropped down to a local bottom of $64,500. In the last five days, Bitcoin has rallied from wick to wick, 12.85% from candle open to candle current. We have rallied 10% over the last five days, which is very encouraging. And it also lines up with a drop that we've had in the stock market. We've had a drop in US stocks over that same time period, and they seem to be recovering. But Bitcoin is actually starting to outpace them when you look down here on something like a four-hour chart. We've had a general corrective movement on um, the United States S&P 500 since about Thursday of um, March, uh, Thursday, Wednesday of March, back on March the 20th. We've been in a general correction. Bitcoin's been largely trading sideways, but in the last four, uh, on the four-hourly chart in the last five, six days, we've had a pretty large rally going on which is very exciting. The question now becomes, is Bitcoin going to use this momentum to rally back to all-time high or not? Well, to answer that question, we must first understand that the Bitcoin halving is about 11 days away, according to coin, according to coin market cap. That is always a very difficult sentence to say. According to coin market cap, we're about 11 days away from the halving, and that stands about at the exact same prediction. That would put us at April the 19th, which is funny because people have been making jokes about the halving coming in on 420 for a while, and it looks like it actually might happen. It actually might happen. It'd be quite interesting. Anyway. The um, the fact of the matter is, though, Bitcoin is very close to the all time high. And what we need to figure out now is whether Bitcoin is going to have the strength to break through the all time high. I'm not really convinced that we're going to break through all time high before the halving comes in for one simple reason. And that is because there is so much uncertainty in the cryptocurrency space. It's not so much fear. It's more of what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. It's more of that kind of mentality. What's going to happen with the halving? By the way, if you guys are enjoying today's stream, make sure to hit that like button. Let's get to over 100 likes. A lot of people are quite uncertain about what's going to happen to Bitcoin in the event of the halving. The halving is slated to take place on the 19th right now, which has been moved back a little bit. So it's right over here. At the moment, Bitcoin is in a large, what seems to be almost a, a uh, ascending triangle pattern. So there is an argument to be made that we're going to see a large breakout. We have seen corrective movement um, in the form of sideways movement over the last month. So that definitely has given Bitcoin time to cool off. It gives us an idea that we are going to see a breakout on Bitcoin. We just don't know exactly when. If you recall, we made a video where we showed this symmetrical triangle pattern. And Bitcoin has actually broken bullish out of it over just the last four hours, which is very exciting news. And it does speak to the strength of the bulls. At this point in time, I would say that the uncertainty of what's going to happen with the halving is stronger than the certainty that we have seen bullishness come from this breakout. When you are doing analysis on a cryptocurrency market, you have to weigh the bullish and the bearish strength. When we teach in the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy, one of the most serious, significant things we teach is the strength of the bulls and the bears. In fact, if I bring up the Crypto Jeb Oscillator real quick, that's what the entire Crypto Jeb Oscillator was built off of. It was built off of measuring the strength of the bulls and the bears. And the bulls are gaining strength, but the bears have the, have the force of uncertainty on their side which is something that you cannot measure because it is qualitative. The only way you can measure it is if you took a giant survey. You could try and measure it in the fear and greed, right? But even fear and greed is not exactly measuring uncertainty. It's measuring fear. It's not so much a fear matter. It's more of a matter of uncertainty. People don't really know what's going to happen 
when the halving occurs because we've never seen a, ha a halving occur post all-time high return, post a breakout above all-time high. We broke all-time high on Bitcoin a month ago now. We've never seen a halving happen then. So there's a lot of uncertainty and that leads people to sideline themselves. When the market is uncertain, people sit on the sidelines, which to be honest with you, if you're trying to play a risk averse long game, that is a wise decision. So what should we do here? We should, as I stated, be prepared to buy low, although please do not short this market. Don't do it. Do not short Bitcoin. Have I been clear? Crystal, hopefully. Do not short Bitcoin right now. And the reason to not short Bitcoin is because you'd be betting against the trend. It would be foolhardy, in my opinion, to short the trend right now. What we should be doing is if we're trying to accumulate Bitcoin or any of these other cryptocurrencies, we ought to be taking the discount that we're still in on a lot of these cryptos. Ethereum's still down from all-time high. It's breaking bullish out of its symmetrical triangle pattern too. Um, but even Cardano, down from its local highs up here around 80 cents. It's down at 60. We ought to continue to dollar cost average. Link, sitting at 18 bucks, all-time high, excuse me, recent high is sitting at 22 dollars and 80 cents we should be continuing to dollar cost average and being ready to buy the dip i've said it over and over and over again you know what it's really easy to make these streams sometimes you know why because i teach you the same thing over and over and over again almost regardless of what's going on with the market and a lot of people are going to tune out and say oh well jab i want something more i want a silver bullet i want something more special than that i want this i want that listen it boils down to this but this is, I have interviewed, I have talked to so many millionaires in these coaching calls that I'm doing. One of my favorite parts of the entire thing I do here. I have talked to so many millionaires, so many people with half a million dollar crypto portfolio and half a million dollars of other assets. So many millionaires, some of them deca millionaires. I've had the great pleasure of speaking with a few of you guys that are worth over $10 million now. I've had the great pleasure of interviewing billionaires, actually. And what they have all done, every single one of them, every last one of them, you know what they've done? They've done something that worked, that wasn't flashy, it wasn't the highest reward, but it was pretty low risk, and they did it consistently for a long time. Michael Saylor, I've interviewed him. He's a billionaire. You know what he did? He consistently showed up to work, worked his tail off, and built a company for 30 years. You know what he invests in? Bitcoin. That's it. I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. I would disagree on Michael Sa with Michael Saylor on that, but why shouldn't he be? The dude's worth 10 billion freaking dollars. He doesn't need to take any more risk in the altcoins. Bitcoin 10Xs, that's good enough for him. That's a multi tens of billions of dollar profit. What does it matter? People get on to Michael Saylor for being a maxi. It works. I agree there's value in the altcoins, but it's working for him, isn't it? His average entry is like 35. The market's at 71. He's made a few billion dollars. The stock is a moonshot. Made billions of dollars. Because he did something simple and consistent. I am all for doing research on the small cap altcoins. Because there's some gems down there. There really are. But if you want to get rich in crypto, and I want you to get rich in crypto. I want you to make a lot of money in crypto. If you want to get rich in crypto, if you want to build wealth in crypto, what you must do is you must choose a system that is consistent, that is tried and true, and is not the most risky bet out there because you're not trying to get rich quick. You're trying to get rich correctly. A wise man once said there are two ways to do something right and again. And my friends, I know too many people also that have built wealth, and this is a smaller category because normally you have to gain some wisdom to build the wealth in the first place and that stops you from losing it but i know too many people they've built a lot of wealth and lost it because they were foolish because they took too many risks because they didn't follow the six laws of money financial sovereignty live on less than you make get out of debt have a written plan build wealth and be generous they didn't follow those laws and so they built a lot of wealth and they lost all of it a new bitcoin all-time high is incoming how do we play this market here's how same way we always do jeb you sound like a broken record broken records are you serious? I sound like every investor who's ever made anything. You do the same thing over and over again because it works. It's called consistency. Have you ever been to France and had McDonald's French fries? I haven't, but I hear they taste the exact same way that they taste in Louisiana, in Kentucky, in Washington State. And I tell you what, I cannot tell you enough how much I am annoyed at McDonald's down, uh, just downward spiral in customer service. But those French fries are the same across continents and across decades that is why mcdonald's is a multi hundred billion dollar company or tens of billions of dollars i think they're worth like 80 billion dollars whatever it is they're worth billions of dollars 
because they are ruthlessly consistent across time, across location, across strategy. They add things and they take things away. But they've got something that is the core that works for this channel. It is financial sovereignty. It is technical analysis. It is that I am a Christian. Those things are consistent and they do not change and they work. We might change the exact way the show layout works and everything, but there is a core and it doesn't change. Here's your core and it doesn't change. You dollar cost average when the market has a great degree of likelihood that it's going to continue to the upside. If you're investing in the stock market, just buy and hold it forever. Come on. If you're investing for retirement, buy Bitcoin and hold it forever. I don't care where you buy it. I don't care if you buy it to the cycle top. If you're going to hold it for 30 years, it's going to be worth more. You dollar cost average on a weekly basis. You take it out of your paycheck or on a monthly basis if you're investing for retirement. I don't even care if it's weekly at that point. But if you're investing for the market, for the cycle, then you buy assets that have a reasonable likelihood of at least two or three Xing and you dump income into them. But Jeb, two or three X isn't enough. Well, my friend, making $20,000 a year and trying to make a 20 X in your investments is not the way anybody ever got rich. The way people build wealth, you want to hear it? You want to hear how people build wealth? They get a large income. They don't have to have a huge income. There are people that are millionaires out there and they never made $100, more than $100,000 in a year. But nobody's a millionaire that makes 20 or 30 grand a year. You got to do something to go and build up the income, build up the marketable skills. Guys, I've been building this channel and this brand and making YouTube videos for nearly seven years. That's the income side of the equation. We talk a lot about investments. We forget about the income side of the equation. Go finish your degree. If you're going to be a lawyer, an engineer, an accountant or something, go finish your degree. Go get a pay raise. Get a job you actually want to go to so you don't mind pulling a little bit of overtime if you're trying to get out of debt. By the way, get out of debt. Free up your income. You need your income to invest. Hello? You can't invest if you don't have money. So get your money back. Stop paying Uncle Sam your money and get a good CPA who's going to help you to get tax breaks. Quit paying your money to bankers in high towers that keep yelling at their assistants and can't agree on what to eat for lunch. Oh, shall we have the caviar or shall we have the filet mignon? That's who you're giving your interest dollars to when you're paying a bunch of interest on your debt. Free up your income, invest it on a consistent basis, buy the freaking dip, and make some money and quit trying to do it all this year. Quit it. If you double your income this year, if you double your net worth this year, if you get out of debt this year, that is probably a better financial year than you have ever had in your entire life. And that is not a 10x. This is not a flashy game. This is a game where the market is the all-star. Bitcoin is the all-star. You are the guy on the side betting on the all-star. You're not the all, you can be the all-star, but you got to earn that. Nobody's born LeBron James. Not even LeBron was born LeBron James. He had to work for it with consistency. So work your freaking butt off, invest consistently, and you'll make money. By the way, Bitcoin's going to hit all-time high. It will do it. I'm willing to put a little bit of skin in the game and make a, such a risky prediction. It will hit all-time high. It will go past all-time high. Quite a lot. By a long shot, it will go past all-time high. And you know who will make the money when it does that? Those who were patient and those who were consistent. Those who freed up their income by getting out of debt, by living on a written plan, that's called a budget, by not giving all of their money to Popeyes, McDonald's, and Penny Mac. Those are the people that will build wealth. The people that are willing to sacrifice getting a flat screen television so they can put the money into investments. By the way, it is not a bad thing to enjoy money, and you should. But invest... Okay? That's how you build wealth. You want to build wealth? Quit thinking that you got to go and figure out how to play the debt game. Quit quit thinking that you got to go and have a flashy car so they get You know what I thought when I started in business? You know what I thought? This was what I, this was my idea. I was so freaking stupid. I was so stupid. I'm not stupid, but I was being stupid. God's given me a degree of intelligence, and I'm very thankful for that. But I'll tell you what, you can, be, you can be smart and be stupid at the same time. Can I get an amen? I'm sure some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Whew. You probably know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I thought? I thought, you know what? I started making money. Start making real money. You know, like five figures a month kind of money. Start making money that, um, that all the people around me are like, what the flip? I make that in a year? You make that in a month? And I didn't know what to do with it. So you know what I thought? I thought, I know what I'll do. I know exactly what that max hour time. Nah. Buy a house paid off. Nah. 401k. Nah. More money into crypto. Yeah, I do that. But you know what I thought? I thought I'll buy myself. This is before the C8 came out. I thought I'll buy myself a Corvette, put my logo on the side and call it a tax write-off. That's my investment. On a loan. 
by the way. That, that's what I thought. I didn't do it. Thank God Almighty. But that's what I thought five years ago. That's what I thought. Because paying the auto loan and then having a flashy car showing up, I was buying into the whole crap of I have to keep up with the Joneses and look cool. And then people will want to listen to me because he's got a Corvette. I don't care if what you drive is missing a freaking wheel, but somehow you're balancing the sucker out and you're going down the road. If you've got the right money, money mindset, then you are going to make money. Here's how you make money in this Bitcoin market. What people don't want to tell you because they want to tell you, it's all about picking the next altcoin. I'm all for picking altcoins. Pick a great altcoin. That's great. But let me tell you how you make money. You do it with patience and you do it consistently and you hold it for a long time. Who in chat is a millionaire? Tell me. What are the character traits that you, anybody worth over $500,000 in the chat? If you're worth under $500,000, hold off. It's not that your opinion doesn't matter, but I want to hear from the experts here. If you're worth between $500,000 to a million dollars and more, what are the character traits? I'm serious. I want to hear every single person worth over $500,000 in chat. If you are willing to let people know that that is your wealth, it's okay if you don't answer this. But if you're willing to let people know, then what is the number one and the number two character traits that you would accredit to building your wealth. And it's okay if it's not patience and consistency. Those are two of the biggest ones, but integrity is actually another big one because integrity actually encompasses both of those. An investment mindset, getting out of debt. Tell me in chat, what are some of the character traits? Just one word. What are the character traits? What are the character traits that got you there? I drive a van, but I'm a millionaire in our currency. Lol. <laughs> we'll be shopping Ferraris instead. I'm worth 500 Egyptian dollars. Anyone who is smart enough not to tell everybody. Anyone who who is worth that is smart enough not to tell everybody on YouTube. Yeah, maybe. Patience and consistency are keys to success. Hold. Patience. Stay humble. Patience and planning. Consistency. Consistency. Just hodl. Poison fries. <laughs> Probably not that. Stay humble. Love it. Hold and forget about the money like it's beer money. Love it. Just like you said, debt-free, budget, consistency, keep learning, patience and time in the market, consistency. These are millionaires and people close to being millionaires. Dedication. These are people that are millionaires and close to it. Determination and patience. These are people, these are real people right now that are speaking. Sacrifice the now for the long-term you. Patience again. Plan. I haven't seen a single person yet, and I know I asked for character traits, but I haven't seen a single person yet. Determination, buy Bitcoin and patience, wake up and repeat, love it. Discipline, yep. Plant, uh, patience and consistency, kindness helps. Absolutely, kindness helps. Rinse it, wake up and <laughs> rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, dollar cost average. Grind hard when you're young. It worked for me. Pay off car, then use that money to pay off house. Love it. My friends my friends say persistence. Time in the market beats time in the market. Yep. It's the experiment. Most kids eat the one cookie instead of waiting for the giant plate of cookies. Those are real people telling you how they made millions. My friend, I want to be very clear. This is not a crypto channel. I know it's called Crypto Jab. Let me be clear. It's not a crypto channel. It's a how do we build wealth? And then continue to build wealth and be generous and enjoy that wealth channel. And we use cryptocurrency as one of our tools, one of our primary tools. It's my expertise. It's where I started in money. Stay humble. Move to El Salvador. <laughs> yeah, that would. Yeah, that might help. Own a business, not working for the man. Pl uh, patience, wisdom, live below your means, consistency, always have goals, open-mindedness. These are real, real millionaires telling you how they built wealth. It is not as flashy as you think it is. It is not about picking the next winning altcoin. It's about buying a market that has a reasonable likelihood of appreciation. Let me tell you something about Bitcoin. At no point in the history of Bitcoin, this may have changed. I don't think this has changed. Somebody can tell me if this has changed. But at no point in the history of Bitcoin has Bitcoin ever gone more than four years without having a new all-time high. If you bought Bitcoin at any point in its history, there has never been a single time where four years later, you were not in profit. I'm checking some of the biggest gaps here. I'm pretty sure that's correct. I could I could be wrong. But tell me tell me if I'm wrong. I am quite certain. Now, there's a couple of times, of course, that we, you know, we drop below the all-time high. So I'll give you that. Bought at 20K. It's at the exact bottom of this bear market. But more or less, 
about 99% of the time, if you buy a mark, if you buy Bitcoin and you hold it for four to five years, you will have a, a more value than you did. And in general, you'll have significantly more value than you did. We are so caught up on what's going on in the day to day. I'm so interested in what's happening on the day to day. It is so interesting for me. Are you kidding me? I do technical analysis for a living. I am like the definition of a nerd. Do you understand that? I am the definition of a freaking nerd. <laughs> I'm interested in what's happening on the short-term time frames, but I build wealth on the long-term time frames. This is interesting. This is life-changing. You're not going to build life-changing wealth in a week unless you win the lottery. And let me tell you something, that's not a reliable, repeatable scientific strategy. What is reliable, repeatable, and scientific is getting out of debt, living on a budget, putting money into an investment that has a very strong likelihood of rallying, uh, of increasing in value, over time, that is not the highest risk bet. You'll lose your butt on that. You're not going out here and trying to use debt as a tool, like a lot of people will tell you. Can you get wealthy that way? You can. But you also take a lot more risk that way. When the tide goes out, you know who's skinny dipping. If you want to play the if you want to play the debt game, you're going to end up getting burned eventually. Eventually, you will. You will. Statistically speaking, you will end up getting burned. If you want to play the airline miles game, let me tell you what's going to happen there. You're going to end up making a few hundred dollars on some airline miles so that you can get crappy tickets with a crappy airline all while not sleeping well at night because you know how easy it is to go over budget when you have plastic. It's a lot harder to go over budget when you only work on cash. It's a lot harder. You know why? Because if you do that long enough, eventually you run out of flipping money and you go broke. But people cash flow their stupidity with plastic all the time, with credit cards all the time. That's exactly what people do. Be wise. Let's read some more. This is great. I love this. I'm so glad I asked this question. Patience, wisdom, um, DCA, me, 1.2 million. Love it. $1.2 million net worth says debt remove, character trait, consistency. Boom. Plan, discipline. Quinn Daughtery said 500K club. Love it. Excited for you. Eating mashed potatoes with eggs. I love it, man. That's a great meal. And it doesn't cost you 100000 flipping dollars. Consistency and determination. What's an easy way to use Bitcoin as collateral for a loan? <laughs> Even if I knew how to do that, I'm not going to tell you because you're going to end up screwing yourself over. Nerd equals invincible. <laughs> uh, Coven the boy donated 600 NT dollars. What's that? Let's see. 600 NT dollars. Uh, what is Netherlands? NT currency. I'm always learning about new currencies. Oh, new Taiwan dollar. Thank you. That translates to about uh, $37 for both of those. I really appreciate it. Nerd equals invincible. Thank you. Jeb, you're the definition of a legend. I'm not the definition of a legend. I am just somebody who is not going to try and lie to you to get a click. There's so many people out here that want to say, oh, try this. You'll give it. No. Now they, may un now, they may believe that. I'm not calling all of them liars. Okay. But a lot of times, people are just trying to get your attention. I'm all for getting attention. I'm a business owner. I do marketing. I'm trying to get you to click on the video, but I'm not trying to get you to click on the video just so I can make a quick buck. I'm trying to get you to click on the video because I want to teach you something that will radically change your life. And that is an approach to finance that is simple, it is biblical, and it is tried and true and it is proven. You have heard from 50 different $500,000 in millionaires in chat. And they all said about the same thing. Determination, consistency, plan, um, uh, you know, waking up and doing it again. I love that. Uh, buying Bitcoin, patience, dollar cost averaging, persistence, sacrificing now for the long term. That's a delayed gratification mentality. At what point during an analogy to skinny dipping cross your mind, Jeb? That is actually a Warren Buffett quote. He says, when the tide goes out, you can tell who's skinny dipping. He's talking about, he's talking about debt. I was quoting I was quoting Buffett. I probably should have accredited that to him. Tommy C, uh, a nerd from Korea is watching, have been watching for ages, a nerd from the States. Is that not nerd enough? <laughs> That's great. I love it. All right, so let's answer the question in chat now that we've gone on a big tirade about how to build wealth. When is Bitcoin going to hit all-time high? Because it's interesting, right? I'd like to know when my investments are going to go up. It's useful. There's nothing wrong with planning. I'm all for planning and understanding the market. So when is Bitcoin going to hit all-time high? There's a part of me that wants to say in the next few days, I'm not going to lie, there's a part of me that wants to say soon because we've broken above the symmetrical triangle pattern. 
There's a part of me that wants to say that Bitcoin is going to break above 73,800 soon because we're already so close. But there's also a part of me that says, ah, there's that uncertainty because of the halving. Post halving, I think we're going to I think we're going to break all time high. I think we're going to break all time high in the next month or two. I told you that at the beginning of the stream. I like to give you guys something up front. I think we're going to break all time high in the next month or two. Um, that's good enough for me because I don't need an exact date on this stuff. I'm not liquidating my Bitcoin probably for decades. But um, <clears throat> that being said, I know it's interesting. Um, I think that Bitcoin will probably end up breaking relatively soon. Here, look at this. We've got, let's get Lux Algo up here because it is actually, it has actually been updated. Bring Lux Algo up here. Take a look at it. The interesting thing about Lux Algo is that we do actually have a buy signal coming in. Now, by the way, like I said, there has been an update here. So you can come into the inputs. We're going to make sure that, uh, I like Smart Trail. We're going to make sure Trend Catcher is on. And then we're going to have our TPSL points. Go ahead and put lines. Take a look at Lux Algo like this. Our TPSL points. The exciting thing about where we are right now, and this is why I wanted to look at Lux Algo, because I hadn't checked it, but I had a feeling we were seeing a confirmed buy signal. You know, it's funny when you've done analysis on markets for long enough, you can start telling what they say without the indicator. Um, as soon as we, as soon as I saw it this morning, I was like, I think that we probably have a Lux Algo buy signal. I like to challenge myself sometimes and not actually check the indicators before I go live. Actually, pretty much all the time. I do the technical analysis live now. I, I used to plan it. My former team, they really wanted me to plan it. I was like, look, I think kind of the magic of what we're doing here is I do it live and I show you guys how to do it. Um, but I've done that for long enough now that I can normally tell what an indicator is going to say. Um, I'm like, I think there's a buy signal. That's why I wanted to look at Lux Algo. But anyway, buy signal comes in. We got train catcher green. That's wonderful. Um, we, uh, I need to come in here and update the boxes because the take profit stop loss has changed. I'm going to have to see how to do that. The bullish take profit and stop loss TPSL. Let's see if that comes on the way it normally does. Um, nevertheless, got to confirm buy signal. Um, that's probably going to give us a take profit and I'll have to figure out how to update Lux Algo and make sure all that's turned on. But it's probably going to give us a take profit up here pushing 80,000 once I get it turned on. Um, this is really exciting. Bitcoin has not gotten above um, this right here, which as you can see in Lux Algo, let's call the smart trail. Really liking the smart trail. We've not gotten above the smart trail yet, so we haven't had as much confirmation as I'd like. But out here on the daily chart, buy signals coming in. Uh, bullish strength is starting to reverse. The bearish strength is coming back down to baseline, starting to uh, leave. We've got this little um, indication right here, which a lot of times can be a uh, good indication uh, here on Crypto Job Oscillator. So all in all, pretty excited for Bitcoin. There's a big opportunity for a major rally coming in in the next couple of days, especially breaking this downtrend. Ultimately, though, we just have to tread carefully because there is still the uncertainty of when the uh, having comes in, how that's going to impact the market. So let's go ahead and read a little bit of chat and then we will continue to move along. We've got some great questions in here. Uh, Andrew Johnson said, Jeb, can you please explain when to take capital gains and uh, take gains and rotate and how? Absolutely. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to um, go into each individual cryptocurrency. Well, Jeb, that's a lot of work. Well, then maybe own less cryptos. If you don't understand it, don't buy it. If you can't keep track of it, don't buy it. If you can't manage it, don't buy it. If you can't be sovereign over it, do not buy it. If you are not sovereign over an investment, sell it, understand it, or call it a gamble. But don't consider yourself an investor in that project. If you go down your Coinbase or down your ledger or whatever it is, and you say, I've got 17 projects here, and i got no idea what they do. Or I know kind of what they do on the back end, but I don't have the ability to keep track of them. Sell them. Research them and start actually following them. Or call them gambles. I'm gambling with this money. I hope it goes up. But I'm not considering myself an investor in XYZ. I'm considering myself a gambler in XYZ. How do you make profits when you rotate? When you are doing the individual analysis on those coins, try and figure out where you think the eventual all-time high will be. Will it be $100,000? Will it be $10,000 on ETH? Will it be $1,000 on Solana? Will it be $10 on Cardano? Funny how all those numbers are just kind of one-digit off then you roll it back and say i am in the wealth building game for the long run i'm not in the game of sucking the life out of my investments and getting every single penny of profit i possibly can i'm in the game of making money not in the game of making the most money at the expense of a huge amount of risk roll it back 
Ethereum's going to go to 10,000, you think? That's what I think. It's going to go to 10,000. All right, at 4,000 or 5,000, maybe about half, but still double from where you are now, which is why I'm trying to get you in over the last several months so you get a big enough profit uh, return. Then that's where you start saying every single week, I'm going to take 1%, 1% withdrawal rate. Take 1% a week, every Friday, every Monday, whatever day. Um, every week, I'm going to take 1%. I'm going to dollar cost out of the dollar cost average out of the market the same way I dollar cost averaged into the market. I'm going to take that money, we'll stick it in either a stable coin that's staking, and we'll stick it in a high yield savings account or a money market account or something making 5%. You can put money in just about any kind of account and make 5% right now. And you're going to hold that money until you've decided what to do with it. We'll talk about that in a second. On each one of your individual investments, when you start to get to a certain point, you can either do it, you can do it one of two ways. You can say when it doubles or when it triples, or you can say when it reaches a certain price target, whatever. That's when you start taking 1% a week. If it gets to the point where you're like, man, I think we're getting really close to the top. Okay, I'm taking 2%, 3%, 4%, 5% a week, and I'm going to increase the percentage every single week. All right? <clears throat> after that is after you've been doing that and you have that money coming in, you're going to set aside some of it for taxes. Depending on your tax bracket, it'll probably be about 15% to a quarter of the profits, the gains you're going to put aside, not the money that was sold, but the gains, you're paying capital gains taxes, not taxes on all the money you sold, you're paying capital gains on the gains. So you got to figure out where your entry was. All right. And from there, the money that's left over, you're going to do one of three things with either one, you're going to reinvest it. Two, you're going to enjoy it. Three, you're going to be generous with it. If you neglect one of those three, you will lose motivation. You will lose the motivation to continue this process. Because it is a godly thing to enjoy your wealth. Jesus drank wine. He ate good food. He fellowshiped with friends. He went to weddings. He enjoyed a nice breath of fresh air, a nice morning sunrise. He enjoyed life. Don't think that Jesus was this monk that never enjoyed anything. He invested. He planted seeds. He brought, not necessarily financially, but he brought on disciples and he invested in them. He invested in the kingdom of God and he was generous. He healed people. He did all three of those things. He enjoyed things, as is a great thing to do. God gave us the garden originally for our enjoyment. Um, and he invested things and he was generous. So if you neglect one of those categories, you will lose your motivation. There is wisdom in what I just said. I hope you caught that because you, prob you probably are not hearing that very often. But if you neglect to be generous and to serve others, you will lack joy. If you neglect to build wealth, you will lack joy motivation. And if you neglect to enjoy things, you will neglect uh, the ability to enjoy things. You, just, you will lose, you will lose, you will burn out. So after you take the profits, you set aside what you need for taxes. And we say, we're not calculating based off this. We're putting that money aside. What's left, we're going to ascribe a percentage. We're going to say, what if you skip the tax and just invest? Well, you might have some people in, in black suits showing up to your door. door. Uh, doing that feels a lot worse than living in debt. <laughs> Because when you're in debt, at least you're on payment payback plan, right? They won't come and throw you in jail for that. You do not want to be a debtor to the IRS. If you don't pay the taxes, then you just entered into debt to the IRS. There is no worse, um, there is no worse person to be in debt to, no worse entity to be in debt to than the IRS. Because they, of all people, are one of the only organizations that have the ability to show up at your door with the guns and drag you out because you were not paying your bills. More likely, they just put a lien on you. Um, and garnish your wages and whatnot. That's that's that is uh, that, that's what's known as stupid. You're not stupid. That is stupid, though. Trying to avoid tax. That being said, by all means, get a great CPA and legally pay as little as you possibly can. Legally, risky business doing that <clears throat> with the money that's left over. I'm going to enjoy twenty percent of it. I'm be generous with thirty percent of it. I'm going to invest fifty percent of it. However, you'll do that. Then you write a plan for what you're going to do with that money. I'm going to I'm going to um, give twenty percent of the proceeds. Great. Who are we going to give it to? We're going to give it to Joe Blow down the street who sucks with money, and I'm just pouring that money into a bottomless pit. I'm going to go forgive somebody's debt just so they can be back in debt three months later. No. Let's say, all right, there's a single mom. Man, this lady works hard. Right, This lady works hard, but she's got two little kids. She's got to pay for daycare so she can go and work, or else the light bill doesn't get paid. I'm going to pay her phone bill for a year. I'm going to pay her rent for a year. All right, let's say... We've got a ministry here. It's called Life for the Innocent. I talk about them sometimes. They, uh, there's a guy that works there. I'm not even going to say his name because he's incognito. He's private. He goes into India and he buys sex slaves, ch children sex slaves. And then he frees them and gets them into, ch into Christian homes where they're raised in the Christian faith. 
buys them out of slavery, gets them out of slavery, and then saves them. That's a great thing to do with it. So write a plan for the money you're going to be generous with. You will have fulfillment from that if you do it with a good, with a generous heart, only if you do it with a willing heart. If you're doing it because, oh, Jeb said so, then it, it won't do anything. Um, but if you were generous with it, you'll be happy. Uh, then you will have joy. Um, you enjoy some of it. Hey, I'm going to go on a trip. I told my wife yesterday, uh, yesterday, I was like, you know what I want to do? I want to put a bunch of picture frames up on the wall with nothing in them. She said, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I said, listen, hear me out. And I said, you know what? It probably is a terrible idea because just a bunch of empty picture frames look dumb. We're going to put a bunch of picture frames up on the wall with pictures of the cities we want to visit. Put a picture frame up with a beach in Hawaii with uh, the Space Needle in Seattle. You know, different places we want to visit. Paris, France. And then as we generate wealth, we set aside some for enjoyment. Then some of that enjoyment money goes to filling up those picture frames on trips. And then you will also have a plan for what you're going to do with the money that you take that you're going to reinvest. And you might say, I'm going to put half of it back into crypto in the next cycle. I'm going to wait for the bottom and start dollar cost averaging when it, when prices are 50 or 60% down. I'm going to put a quarter of it into retirement and a quarter of it I'm going to put into paying off my house. Whatever it is. But you're going to have a plan for those three categories. That is how you're going to cycle out and be wise with the money. Really excited for you. Let's go to El Salvador, Jeff. Yeah, sure. El Salvador. Jesus Alvarez said, cool idea. Hope it helps you. It'll work. If you, if you do if you do the work, it will work. Sounds like indoctrination with extra steps. What is indoctrination? What part of that's indoctrination? Jeb will stare at the eclipse without glasses. No, I have my glasses on. Don't worry. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to wrap it out here in just a second. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's stream. Andrew Johnson, tell me if that was helpful. I just dropped my pen. I just dropped my pen. Where'd my pen go? Oh, well. I found it. Found it. All right, we're going to read chat for a couple more minutes, and then we're going to wrap it out. Before we... Uh, before we wrap it out, I do want to let you guys know that today's stream is brought to you in part by Blowfin. If you sign up for Blowfin with the link in the description box down below, you're going to be getting access to an excellent cryptocurrency exchange with over 300 plus trading pairs. The reason that I think that you ought to consider Blowfin also is because they've got great features like copy trading. As you can see, if you go onto the copy trading feature, you can find a bunch of other traders that actually do know what they're doing with trading. It's okay if you don't know how to trade. Just don't do it. But if you're interested in getting involved in the trading game, you can do it with a small portion of your portfolio. And you can do it by following along traders that have a proven track record and sharing in the profits with them. It's a really cool feature to get your feet wet in the art of trading. Most of you guys will stay as investors, and that is totally fine. You'll build a lot of wealth like that. But if you decide that you do want to become a trader, one of the best ways to get involved, and even if you're not going to be a trader, one of the, one of the, a great way to build wealth in crypto is to copy trade people that actually um, are experienced in this. Now, start with a very small portion of your portfolio because obviously this is somebody else controlling your trade, and so you want to be careful with that. But this acts a little bit like somebody actively managing your money in the stock market. It's not a bad idea. Just make sure that you pick the right individual. So you can use that copy trading feature over here on Blowfin and make some money in the markets. Make sure that you vet the person that you're going to be copying. But it is a really cool feature, so make sure to check it out with the link in the description box down below. My plan is to overpay on my mortgage using my profits. Good. Good idea. Good job. Andrew Johnson said, yeah, best ever. Glad that that could help. Semi-new to the crypto space, any apps that you recommend for buying crypto? Yeah, Friday. Actually, we are in the process of getting uh, a crypto.com sponsorship. I really am excited about crypto.com because they are a great place to buy cryptocurrency. So make sure that you check out crypto.com. You can go to the app. They've got over 80 million users. One of the largest exchanges in the cryptocurrency space. So make sure to check them out. Uh, we'll have an affiliate link for that in the next uh, few days. So make sure to check and uh, sign up with that. All right, guys. I hope you have enjoyed today's stream. I really appreciate all of you being here. We are going to wrap it up. Before we go, I do want to make sure that I remind each and every one of you that all success in life and all salvation in life begins with a personal and daily walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're interested in talking more about that, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about that. Plenty of people in chat here would be more than happy to talk to you about it as well. Hope that you've enjoyed today's stream. I hope that it has been beneficial. I hope I've planted some seeds that might help you in your walk here in life. And uh, please, pursue financial sovereignty. I beg you. I beg you. Please do. 
It has changed my life, and I know I can change yours too. So make sure to follow the paths of financial sovereignty. I will teach you what those look like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Hit the post notification bell so you won't miss a single episode. And before I go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good feeling. I got a real good feeling.